Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at resource grouping within RAD Schedule View, part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing both RAD Schedule View and the resources setup that we created in the Adding Resources video and project, and then we're going to see how we can add some additional resources, as well as how to actually perform grouping on our resources to get the nice visual appeal of grouped resources within RAD Schedule View. Stepping into Visual Studio, as you might remember, we went ahead and added a brand new RAD Schedule view, complete with view definitions, so we can see day, week, month, and timeline, and we also added a resource type collection, which goes to RAD Schedule view, resource type source, resource type collection, we define the resource type, as well as the different resources that are available within that type. So we have all A, B, and C, all going to the resource type location. Now looking into code, we went and created an observable collection of appointments. We added a brand new appointment with a subject, a start, and an end time. And we set the appointment source of RAD Schedule View to those appointments. So we now have an appointment able to display within RAD Schedule View. And if you remember the previous video, we're able to go into that appointment and select a resource for it. So what can we do to take this to the next level? Well, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead into our resource type collection and add ourselves a new resource type. So we'll say Telerik resource type, display name will be speaker, name will also be speaker, and in here we're going to want to add some resources, so Telerik resource, resource name will be Enchev, resource type will again will be speaker, go ahead and add two more of these, we'll make Enchev, Milev and Donchev to just pick three random developers I know from these XAML teams. Which means that we now have both location and speaker. So if I went ahead and ran this right now, we're going to go ahead and see that if we go into our existing appointment, there's going to be two different resources able to be selected. So we'll go and say location, hall A, speaker, Milev. So now we can go ahead and add both of these resources to our appointments which is great, but we now want to have some kind of better view of what resources are being used within our appointments and really how these resources compare. So if we need to schedule or make sure there's no conflicts, we can very quickly and easily see this without having to go into each and every appointment. We go ahead and do this by going into Telerik, RAD Schedule View, and going into, wait till our intelligence pops up, Group Description Source. In here, we're going to add Telerik Group Description Collection. And in there, we want to add a different kind of group description. Now, we'll go ahead, I'll scroll this down so our IntelliSense is showing up a little bit better for you guys. Say Telerik, and we have Date, Group Description Collection, Resource Group, and Time Zone Group Description. Now, these open up a lot of different options for how we want things to be displayed. I'm going to go ahead and just straight go to Resource Group Description which will give us the option to say resource type and show null group. Resource type in this situation, we're going to say location, and we won't set show null group, which means when I go ahead and restart my project, we're going to see Internet Explorer pop open, and as you remember, we went ahead and defined an appointment that should be showing up at 1230. But it's not, because we have our different resources set, however, we don't show the null group for anything that doesn't have this resource set. This is very quickly remedied, so we'll go right back in here, use our IntelliSense, show null group, we will set this to true, and now when we rerun our project, we're going to see an extra column on the right hand side that's going to define any appointments that don't fall into hall A, B, or C. So we can go ahead and scroll down and see now we have this new appointment. Clicking in, we definitely do not see a location being set. So we'll cancel out. However, if I want to, I can drag and drop this appointment. You can see we have that exact time thing going on with our appointments. And I will drag and drop this into Hall B. So now when I open my appointment and look at this resource, we can see Hall B has already been set for location. So Schedule View is intelligent enough to know that if you go ahead and set this appointment and then drag and drop it to a brand new resource location, you probably want to set that resource on the appointment. So we take care of that for you. Go ahead, click OK. Now, of course, this can go one step further. 
So I'll go ahead and add another thing to our grouping. So we have our resource group description. We'll add another one of these. Telerik resource group description. Resource type this time will be our other resource, speaker. And we're not going to show null group on this one. You'll see why in a second. Because we're going from top down order in how we define these and that's going to dictate how we're actually looking at it within schedule view. So once our explorer pops up, you can see that we're both breaking things down by our three separate halls as well as the three different speakers that you can have available in those halls. So as I go, we can see once again we have no null group defined. So we'll go and make a brand new appointment under hall B for Milev. You can see location and speaker both have been filled out. Subject, new appointment will be a new apot. Description will be high. And we can now see this has been defined under Hall B, under Milev. But of course, great thing about this, resize our appointment, make it a little easier to move around. We can change this to Hall C. You can see Hall C for Milev. Or we'll go ahead and go to Hall A for Donchev. And once again, we go in, we can see Hall A and Donchev are automatically assigned by RAS Schedule View just by the nature of us dragging and dropping. So we'll go ahead, click OK. But if we switch over to Week View, we're going to see that this becomes a little bit complicated to look at because we have Hall A stretching a lot of days and the speakers, we only really fit two onto our screen. So there is a better way we can make this happen. And for that, RAD Schedule View actually has a nice built-in default feature. This is the date group description. If you set this at the top, and we'll go ahead and we will rerun this. Once our Explorer pops back open, we're going to see a slightly different view of how everything's working. So now we have our date. This is day view. The date is going up top. We still have halls A, B, and C with the speakers underneath the halls. But if we go to week view, we now see it's broken down a little bit nicer. So we have the day up here, followed by the halls and the empty column, as well as the speakers under the halls. So as you can see, this can get very, very powerful very, very quickly. And we really haven't had to do much more than add a few lines of XAML to get all this functionality up and running. But of course, I have one last cool thing to show you. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the speaker resource type. We can get rid of the resource group description for speaker as well. And we want to go up and say for our resource type location, wait for IntelliSense, allow multiple selection is true. Now, the cool thing about this, as we go back into RAD Schedule View, because we're going to do everything from creating appointments in a live running RAD Schedule View. So we can see that we have our day. We go back to a week view, and it's a little bit nicer of a week view since we just have the days as well as the halls and their empty slot. But back in day view, I can go ahead and say in Hall B, I want to create a new appointment. So I'll say this is brand new. Description will be high. And we have it set to Hall B. But now you can see this resource drop down actually has some check boxes next to the three different halls. So I will go ahead, just click OK for this. We can see it's in Hall B. That's all set and good. We can move it to Hall C. We can see this has been set. However, if I now go ahead and click Hall B, click OK. Our appointment is now duplicated across both of the halls. This is because it's utilizing both resources so we know, say, you know, maybe you have a giant area with rooms that you can change the size of or take walls down. Maybe you have a really, really big discussion. You know, Scott Guthrie is coming to your user group and all of a sudden you need extra room for all the people that are going to be attending. You can go ahead and very easily define this and say, hey, we need both halls B and C for the speaking engagement cool thing too is that these appointments are synchronized. So as I move these around at different times, or as I go ahead and resize these, you can see both appointments are reflecting all those changes that I made. And of course, whichever one you want to go ahead and click on, we'll go ahead and click on Hall B. We can see both locations are selected and visible in this location drop-down box. So even more of the power that you have with resource grouping and resources built into RAD Schedule View. So I want to thank you for watching the resource grouping with RAD Schedule View video. And I hope you've seen just some of the power and versatility that resources and resource grouping can bring to your scheduling projects. And don't forget to stay tuned for the final video in this mini-series where we take resources and resource grouping to the next level by adding filtering so that even if a resource isn't grouped, you can quickly and easily see which appointments of which resources are visible in RAD Schedule View. So stay tuned for more.